Hey, welcome to day 16 of our 21 day fasting and prayer. What a journey is so far it has been. We've been talking about prayer, talked about the power of prayer. We talked about how do we make our prayers powerful. We talked about yesterday, we talked about um, the purpose of prayer. Why do we need to pray? We looked at three reasons, first three reasons why we need to pray. We, talk, we said prayer is the opportunity that we get uh, to worship God. Um, while we sing and praise and worship God, prayer is also uh, an opportunity given to us to acknowledge who God is. At the same time, prayer is also an act of uh, expressing our dependency on Him, on Him and submitting to His will. That's the second reason why we need to pray. In order to express our dependency on Him and in, in, a, in an act of obedience, um, saying, God, we need you. Without you, we can't do anything. But most importantly, we said prayer is for communication. Prayer is to develop, is to help us to develop a deep relationship with Father. That's why prayer. Uh, there are so many things that God can do without us asking Him. Because He's our Father, He already knows what we need. But He still does want us to come to Him and talk to Him. Um, so that He can develop a relationship with Him. Establish a, develop, a relationship with Him. Um, which he loves, you know, he loves being around us. He loves us being around him. And so prayer is for communication. And today we look at two more uh, reasons why we need to pray. Um, prayer um, is an act of supplication. Of course, we're going to come to prayer with all our petitions, with all our needs. God wants us to come to him, to appeal to him in prayer. The, so in other words, we're coming to him to make known our requests to him. Um, John chapter 15 verse 7, Jesus says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. It's like a blank check written out from the bank of heaven, signed by Jesus himself. God wants us to ask him for what we want and need from him. Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, make your requests known to God. It says in John chapter 16 verses 24, ask and you will receive. Uh, Luke chapter 11 verses 9, Jesus says, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. James chapter 4 verses 2 says, you do not have because you do not ask. You know, you see this in all these verses that we have just mentioned. The word ask is constantly repeated. God wants us to ask him all our needs. God has treasures that he wants to pour out into our lives upon us. But they remain hidden from us simply because we won't ask for them. Ask for, from him. I remember reading a story of a guy who died and went to heaven. All over the heaven there were um, you know, these warehouses... Um, inside this, these warehouses, there are tem tremendous gifts, fantastic things, spiritual situations, homes, jobs, happy families, all kinds of gifts wrapped up and you know, neat gifts. So the guy asked the Lord, um, Lord, what are all these gifts? And the Lord said, uh, there is a tag on every one of these gifts. And every tag says the same thing. So he goes over and looks at that. Uh, those gifts that are wrapped and the tag that was attached to it and each of those gifts each of those tag reads never asked for never asked for could it be possible that we have had an opportunity to ask God and never asked God and so never received it that this morning it could be that your your situation that because you didn't ask you didn't receive what are you lacking today? What are you? What do you need from God? What treasure of His would would you would you just like to have? Ask God for it. I mean, He wants you to ask so that He can supply it. I mean, what is? What do you lose in asking God? The maximum that can happen is God can look at you and say, "No, that's all He can say." Otherwise, He can do it. You know, it, it is a possibility that God can do it. Some of you might be thinking, I've asked before and I didn't get what I asked for. That could be a possibility. Well, first of all, nobody wants to be taken for granted. Remember that. 
Imagine if a friend just asked for stuff all the time, but never want to spend time with you. That only if he wants money, he will come to you and ask, borrow money from you, take money from you, or ask for favors from you. But he just doesn't hang out with you, doesn't want to spend time with you. Uh, they are being selfish, aren't they? I mean, it's the same with us. That's what James says in chapter 4, verses 3 of James. He says, well, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. You, that you may spend what you get on your own pleasures. You are asking with selfish ambitions. The prior to this verse, he says, you don't get because you didn't ask. But then he says, you, are, you ask, but you don't get because you are asking with the wrong motive. So be sure your motives are right. Um, secondly, God wants us to rely on him and come to him knowing that he wants to help us. Um, in Luke chapter 11, verses 5 to 8, Jesus tells an, a parable to illustrate this point. Um, because of the man's, it was because of the man's boldness, not arrogance, that he gave him what he's looking for. A parable that talks about how that man received it. God wants us to come before him in bold faith because we know that he's a good and generous father. Delight yourself in the Lord. Bible says, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 37 verses 4. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Over 20 times in the New Testament, the Bible says, ask, ask, seek, knock, keep on asking. Spurgeon, C.H. Spurgeon, the man known as the preacher of the preachers, a great pastor in London, uh, England, once said like this, God never shuts his storehouses until you shut your mouth. Brilliant, huh? Think about that. You have to ask. Prayer is an act of supplication. God answers every prayer. But only in a way that will be a blessing to us. That you need to remember. In his book, Too Busy Not to, Too Busy Not to Pray, uh, uh, Bill Hybels, the author Bill Hybels, explains what's going on. He says this, if the request is wrong, God says no. If the timing is wrong, God says slow. If you are wrong, God says grow. If, but if the request is right, the timing is right, and you are right, God always says go. Think about it. We are often in need of changes that we can only become aware of when we come to God for something else. Prayer is how God makes those necessary changes. Supplication. Fifth reason why we need to pray is because of cooperation. God wants us to work together with him in prayer. The fifth purpose of prayer it does is to cooperate with God. This is the most exciting thing about prayer. God has sovereignly chosen in his wisdom that we can cooperate in his plan by praying and helping his work being done on the earth. Think man, think about the privilege that you and I got. He doesn't need us. He, I mean, there is nothing we can add to it, you know, for his will and what he wants to accomplish in this world. But still God wants to do his will on the earth when we join with him in prayer. Prayer is God's program. Prayer is God saying, I have chosen to limit myself to accomplish what to, to, to what I accomplish on earth by simply by limiting myself to the faith of my children on the earth. What they believe me for, that I will do. When we pray for other people, we are cooperating with God. We are teaming up with God to accomplish God's work on the earth. Probably the most amazing verse in the Bible is uh, John chapter 14, uh, verses 12 and um, 13. A brilliant uh, um, verse. I assure you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. Well, and he will do greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Jesus wants us to pray together. Our Father, 
who art in heaven. You know the prayer that he taught us. This is our prayer to be prayed with one another. In teaching us how to pray, he says to pray with one another. For as long as we do, we will care more for each other, about each other. And in fact, it will unite us, this prayer. Church is like a bundle of twigs. Individual twigs can easily be snapped. But when they are bound together, they are much stronger. That's the, this is, that is the great picture of what happens when we pray together. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 2, Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. I, I, you know, I want to be part of a praying community. Jesus wants us to be part of a praying community. And praying community can only be built if each of us are people who pray and cooperate with one another, cooperate with the kingdom of God, cooperate with God in and through prayer. I mean, understand this. When you pray, God moves. God will do His will on the earth because of your prayer. And that's the privilege God gave us. So today we saw that prayer, of course, is used for supplication, that we bring all our needs. Not that He doesn't know, but, but that He wants us to come to Him, spend time with Him. Uh, understand that we are dependent on Him. Um, understand, I know acknowledge that we don't take God for granted. In supplication, that's what we are telling to God. But it also is that, that in prayer, we are identifying ourselves as the children of God, as the people who believe in the will of God and the purpose of God in this earth. And we are cooperating with God to fulfill His purpose.